it on. This chapter we complete up to the participants. You don't have to study anymore. For the midterm, pay attention. We began the course, spent the first two or three weeks into general financial economics. These are the first four chapters. This was the same material as quiz one will be on the midterm. Money markets, chapter five, the same will be as quiz two. We've covered in the last three weeks bond markets and mortgage markets. So up to here, up to this moment is the midterm. Now I am continuing with chapter eight, which is stock markets. Stock markets is chapter eight. Stock has many definitions, is a share of ownership. It is known as equity. Yeah, let's let's get these guys here, the last two guys. Let's get her a ten months late. Yeah, keep going no more. Your name, please. Your name. So, is a share of ownership. It gives you equity. It is the same as ownership. The same as ownership interest. Interest in, hey, 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 come here, come here. Let's, come here, hey, hey. Give me, no, 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 yeah, let's, no, no sign. I, I will give you a little absence today. Who are you? Number three? Okay. Is interest. Interest has two meanings, but the first general meaning is that you have some sort of financial benefit. Financial benefit. And it's the same as stake. To have a stake means you put money into something, expect something back in a return. Well, of course, stake was often associated with investment. All right. The buyers of stock we call stockholders. Stockholders. Okay, these are the buyers. We also shorten them, but it's incorrect. Simply call them investors. Investor means the buyer of any investment, the buy, buyer of any financial instrument. So investor will be buyer in any money market instrument, the buyer in any capital market instrument. Investor will be also a buyer of real estate, a buyer of gold, a buyer of anything which they expect to hold and get a return. Investor could be even a buyer of a shop, buyer of a business. So investor is not a good appropriate word. Investor means something very different, okay? So we just call them stockholders, okay? Stock
stockholders, the key is that they have a residual claim. The word residual means that you collect or get everything after all obligations have been paid off. After you paid the salaries, after you paid interest, after you paid bondholders, after you paid taxes, after you paid your electricity bills, after you pay, paid all liabilities, you get whatever is left over. That means residual claim. It also means that you are the most junior in all claimants, most junior. We say that all creditors have a senior claim. What happened to you? Uh, okay, well, let's just give you a little absence and let's see which one was it over here. Okay. That's just not an action, just a lace. Uh, it's a learning, it's a lesson, right? All right, so they have a junior claim. <coughs> Next. Uh, stockholders have and votes. So they have voting privilege. Voting privilege. Voting privilege means they vote on all important things in a corporation. They make all major financial decisions. But the biggest one is that shareholders uh, vote for they vote for the board of directors. So, the shareholders vote for the board of directors, they make all important decisions. The board of directors uh, in turn selects the CEO, chief executive officer, and the CEO makes all operational decisions, day-to-day -day management decisions. Okay. The responsibility of the board and uh, of the CEO is to maximize stockholder, we also call it shareholder value. So, stock is the same as equity, is the same as ownership, is the same as share. Share and stocks are used interchangeably. Sometimes back in the old days, uh, they, in England, stock became to be stock called, and later on in the US, they became to use share. But now the more common word is stock and stock market. Okay? But these stock and share are used interchangeably. So, Board of Directors' main job is to maximize shareholder or stockholder value, however that will be done. So stockholders have no direct control over the company. They have no direct, but they indirectly control the CEO by selecting the Board of Directors. Sometimes when shareholders are not happy with the CEO, they will go, they will change the board of directors, they'll change the people, and then they'll force the board of directors to change the CEO. And if the board of directors does not uh, make the shareholders happy, the shareholders will change the... Sometimes the shareholders will put themselves on the board of directors, if the board of directors don't do a good job. That's the way it actually works. Let's see what else. Uh, I already explained a little bit the stock market could be 
primary, where stock is issued for the first time, and this is a very small market with just a few IPOs, just a few primary issues, and it could be secondary. This is the stock market where investors trade shares between themselves. We call them shareholders, sell to each other shares. The secondary market has a very important function of price discovery. With many buyers and many sellers, you can discover what is the price of a share. I mean, you can look up and say the price is $37 or $39. And from price discovery, you can discover what is the value of the company. The value of the company based on price is called market value. Market value is the value which the market gives to the stock. Okay. And then there is a fair value, which is the true, genuine, we we'll also call it fundamental. value, which is based on the expected earnings and expected dividends and the expected future cash flow from the stock. Next, when the market value is bigger or higher than the fair value, okay, uh, let me see where I write it. Okay. Let's do like this. When market value is bigger than fair value, we say that the stock is overvalued. When the market value is less than the fair value, we say that the stock is under that. To be successful investor in the stock market, you must identify undervalued stocks and invest in them and you must identify overvalued stocks and avoid them. Okay. In terms of voting privilege, not everyone will have an equal uh, power in our voting right? Well, well, power or voting power is determined on the number of shares. If you have one share, you have one voting right. Uh, she has 10,000 shares, she has 10,000 more voting rights than you. you know, I'll explain, there, there, there is a little bit later coming into uh, that voting part. Uh, the stock market, I'm back to the secondary market. The secondary market provides value. Value is based on future cash flow. And the future cash flow is based on the future. So, one of the main functions of the stock market is forecasting. It can give you a good, fair forecast of economic expectations. So you can say that it's a very good 
economic forecast. When stock market goes up, up, up and up, which usually means that the economic forecast is positive or favorable. When the stock market's going down, it's an indicator that the economy is going down. So the stock market functions as a thermometer. also as a barometer. You look at the stock market and the stock market tell you whether the economy is doing good or bad and what the prospects of the economy are. Okay? That's the first important barometer. Well, now what governments do is they manipulate the stock market in order to fool the people into believing by boosting up the stock market and the stock market goes up, they say, see, stock market's going up, the economy is doing well and will be doing better. So they're working on the thermometer, okay? In other words, politicians, uh, you have two ways of getting the economy away. One way is to do the work and the economy is doing really good. The other one is just to say the economy is doing good, right? So, there are two ways to say, hey, this room is comfortable. One is, you just run the air conditioner after 20 or 30 minutes of work and electricity, the temperature goes down. The other one is just say, hey, temperature is from 31, now it's 27 degrees, right? You just change the thermometer rather than changing the temperature in the room. So, the stock market is one of the better indicators uh, or barometers or thermometers of economic activity. And now comes the most important part. When the stock market is not manipulated by the government. When the stock market is manipulated, it doesn't mean anything anymore. Well, now the second best indicator for the financial market is the gold market. Gold market acts as the thermometer and barometer of the financial system. Usually governments don't like to see gold going up because it's an indicator that the government is doing a bad, poor job of managing the financial system and the economy. When financial risk and the system goes bad, gold goes up. When everything in the economy and financial market is good, gold goes down. So governments love to manipulate the stock market and make it look better than it is. They love to manipulate the gold market and make gold look worse than it is. Let's see what else we got because we got a, a pretty much uh, finish, at least for today. Stock can be common. and preferred. Preferred gives you a fixed dividend if the dividend is available. So they said they'll give you a 6% preferred dividend. But the dividend is fixed at 6%, but they don't have to pay. If they have the money and if they have the profit, they will pay. And if they don't have the money, they don't have an obligation. So, dividends and preferred dividends, uh, companies prefer them to bonds because a 6% bond, you must pay interest. If you don't pay interest, you go bankrupt. But with a dividend, if you don't pay dividend, nothing happens. I mean, shareholders are unhappy, but you continue to do. So, the, dividend, the difference between dividend and interest is that interest must always be paid on time and dividend may be paid, may not be paid, will be paid if you have money and will not be paid if you don't have money. It's up to the board of directors 
to declare a dividend or not to declare a dividend. All right, that's good enough for today. Next time, I will be...